Hi. One of our stories from our scripture reading today is one that you might have heard of before. It's the story of David and Goliath. And it's a story of that great big giant that can be really hard to overcome. Sometimes in our lives we have things that are difficult for us, like challenges, things that seem like they're giant for us. But you know, sometimes we can overcome those things. I have a short video for you that has six true stories about young people who had things that they had to overcome against all the odds. Watch these carefully and see which one inspires you the most. Daring to dream is how little Alyssa has gotten through life since her accident. Last May, she was hit by a truck. Her leg had to be amputated below the knee, but she didn't let the operation keep her off the stage. And less than a year into her new life, Alyssa delivered a showstopper at her dance studio's recital. She performed an original piece. And if you think just the dancing is brave, watch this. Alyssa removes her prosthetic and doesn't miss a beat. I asked her why she did it. To um, show them that I was still me without it and to be myself. Lots of kids dream of being the next LeBron James or Kobe Bryant, but Julian Newman may just have a shot. Only 11 years old, he's playing guys two feet taller and seven years older. And guess what? He's beating them. They think that I'm not good, or but when they see me, they, they see different. This fifth grader is already the starting point guard on his high school's varsity basketball team. That's right, fresh from elementary school, Julian plays for the high school varsity team. Right away, we knew he had a talent. His dad, also his coach, helped put together Julian's highlight reel on YouTube. It's going viral with more than two and a half million hits and counting. Welcome to the track and field championship. When Charlotte Brown runs down her lane with her pink pole vault and leaps into the sky, you hold your breath. She's just 15 years old and she's learned to fly. But what's most amazing is she can't see. I really can't make out a blur even. It just, it really just doesn't, it really just blends in for me. She can't see the track or the fancy color of her pole vault or the faces of the people in the stands. She's legally blind. So you have no idea, you know, what I really look like. Right. Doctors don't know why, but she started losing her sight when she was just 16 weeks old. Several surgeries later, none of it helped. She took to the pole vault like a champion. But how in the world does someone who's blind do so well at something that's challenging for anyone? This is what pole vaulting looks like to a sighted person, but this is what it looks like to Charlotte. She says it's like looking down the inside of a little black straw and seeing a blurry light at the end. So she has a system. Her coach lays artificial turf next to her lane. She can see the difference between light and dark, and it helps her run straight. One, two, three. She counts her steps and then goes for it. And now get this, she's not just any pole vaulter, she's the best her high school has ever seen. We're back now with a California boy who is celebrating after setting a new world record, becoming actually the youngest person ever to swim from San Francisco to Alcatraz and back. That's about a little over two miles. Yeah, Impressive. very long distance. And he's only nine years old. James Savage walked onto the beach and collapsed in his mother's arms after that grueling two-hour mm -hmm. trek. He battled conditions uh, that were also pretty bad, windy and frigid. He says he even considered giving up. I thought it was going to be easy at first, but then after I got out there, the tide was pushing me all around. I was about to quit, but then I kept on going. When he first announced he wanted to walk a mile in a race, the most he ever walked was 20 steps. Watching sports with dad was his first love, but running together quickly took over. It's very difficult to have athletic events that you two can do together. And for the past six years, they have. It started small with each race run by dad, but finished by both. Um, we just had a, a, a person the other day say, you know, Johnny could be a professional athlete. And he said, no, I'm serious. He said he really could be. A uh, person like me being able to endure endurance races and stuff, but I, I think it's a tremendous lesson for me. Uh, it teaches me that anything is possible. Who would have ever thought, you know, my son with cerebral palsy, 
is going to be able to you know, participate in an event of this magnitude. In an ESPN E60 story from a few years ago, Johnny challenged himself to walk the final mile of a 5K and realize the true feeling of competition and completion on his own. That powerful day was the day his athletic dreams began to be realized. You have the ability to do something special and it's up to you uh, to make that become a reality. That has really been my biggest inspiration and my the biggest athlete that I look up to because of his determination uh, to get me across that finish line. The duo now faces its toughest test as they've been invited to run in the world's toughest race, the Kona Ironman World Championship Triathlon, which will test both Johnny and Jeff's limits in unfathomable ways. If you think based on watching these images that 16-year-old Kate Foster is a talented gymnast, you'd be right. But that's not the whole picture. This is the whole picture. The Illinois teen is not only talented, she's extraordinary, able to defy gravity and stick picture-perfect dismounts with a prosthetic leg. Kate's love of tumbling began at age seven. She loved it right from the beginning, the extra practices, the extra time at the gym. I've never really found anything that I've loved more. But then at age 12, the unthinkable. Kate was diagnosed with leukemia and an infection that ravaged her leg forced her to choose between life and a limb. They told me what was going on and I said, you're not taking off my leg. I need that for gymnastics. And they were kind of explaining to me, you know, <laughs> this this bone marrow transplant won't work unless we do this. It's really, it's really your leg or your life. Kate worried having only one leg meant her life as a gymnast was over, but her coach had other ideas. After the amputation, my coach said something to me that really changed my mindset. She said that she had never coached a one-legged gymnast before, but she was willing to try if I was. So they set off on an uncharted course. Today, Kate competes with her team, traveling throughout the nation in sanctioned gymnastics competitions. I hope you found that inspiring, whether you're young or young at heart. And you know what, as Christians, when we are faced with those kind of challenges, then we know that we can ask God to help us. And through God's Spirit, we are able to do amazing things and overcome things against all the odds. So let's say a prayer together. Please pray with me. Dear God, when things are sometimes difficult for us, help us not to give in. Give us the courage, like David, to face the challenges and the difficulties in our lives, so that with the help of your Holy Spirit, we too can beat the odds. Amen. <laughs>